Hey guys, so what's it like unboxing one of the world's latest and greatest home cinema processors? Today, I'm going to crack open the Acris Muse 16 channel Dolby Atmos immersive surround processor. Coming right up. The immersive home cinema processor. These are definitely the single biggest thing you can do to absolutely revolutionize the sound of your home cinema. Now what's so exciting is you can change this one piece out and dramatically transform the system. But of course you need a few things, the power amps and a system which is really at that level. Today we're gonna to unbox and check out the Acris Muse processor, which is a beautiful 16 channel immersive surround processor, which means the DTSX, the Dolby Atmos is all ready to go. And 16 channels can absolutely look after, if not a single row to a full effect, even a, a double row cinema is getting mega immersion out of 16 channels. Got us a head start. The Muse is already out of the box, but let's check out this unit for real. So it was a box within a box. Pretty cool, you don't see white at the bottom of things too often, so. Now this lights up beautifully. We've got actually an interactive touch screen on the front panel, we'll see that in action later. And again, more white on the back. Makes it really easy to see what you're doing in the back of a rack, which is usually really dark. Here we got the 16 channel. And you might realize we're actually down maybe four channels from the XLR outputs, which is totally true because we've also got this guy in here. Just as the, uh, the Trinovs have multi-point breakouts, so does the Muse. So here we've got our four more channels of output through the DB style connector. And these are beautiful cable factory built, so you're not missing out on the quality that you could get out of your usual connectors. Although, look at that, it's only about a meter, not even that, it's like half a meter. Now, I'm pretty sure you can order some longer cables as well, but of course, if you're gonna do a clever rack, you're gonna to have to have the four channels from the auxiliary out here nice and close. Now you notice these no legacy video on here whatsoever, which a lot of the processors are doing. Even something like the AVM60 is purely a HDMI video unit only. But this is pretty exciting. This unit has a full eight HDMIs in, in the 2.1 format. So this is a brand new unit, the very latest 2.1 HDMI card, and it's got a dual output as well. Could be cool if you've got a, a TV slash projector setup. I'm gonna see if this is gonna talk friendly to another processor in our demo room and actually see if I can bridge the audio signal that way, but I'm not gonna keep my hopes up because HDMI doesn't like doing things like that. It's not just about HDMI for audio, of course. This has been an audio box first and foremost. We've also got some digital audio, two optical, two coaxial, and two analog inputs. Things like CD players, record players, they're all compatible with this guy as well. Now control is a big deal for any system. It does come with its own pre-programmed remote control. This unit actually looking very much, because it is, a Harmony remote control. So why reinvent the wheel, right? End of the day, these guys are gonna run with an automation system mostly. We run a lot of control for those sorts of things. So we've got RS-232 and also IP Ethernet. This unit's actually set up, uh, not only from the front panel, but by a online browser type app as well. Further control features, we've got our 12 volt triggers in and out. You're gonna be running at least one or two power amplifiers with this unit. So of course it's gonna automate the power amps when the processor turns on. This one really is controlling the show. We've got a few USB ports over here as well. I'm not sure what they do yet. 
though uh, I'm definitely going to run some external fans if possible uh, out of the unit to power up the fans for the power amplifiers. We'll find out though whether uh, running a fan of this unit is going to be detrimental to the audio quality. So very handy for running extra fan and cooling in a rack. Not so good, it's going to add noise in the system. You wouldn't expect it to, but you never know. Power supply here is a three pin configuration, which is awesome because ground loop problems between processors and power amps can and do happen. We'll actually be using this system with the new Theory Audio system amplifier controller, um, and they recommend a fully grounded processor to ensure no ground loop issues. So um, we should be all good with this one. So this HDMI board is brand new, and I know with, as most of you have probably checked out, if you had some cinema gear in the past, HDMI is a pain in the butt. And not all boards are the same. Firmware updates certainly help to add compatibility, though we're expecting big things from this new 2.1 board, where we're gonna maintain compatibility and ensure rock solid signals all the way through. And the guys have mentioned that they're expecting better sound quality with this new board as well, which is awesome. So when this unit shipped, I also received a special surprise. So on board here is indeed a brand new 2.1 HDMI board to suit our other Acurus Muse processor. So we're actually able to hardware upgrade the Muse platform, plus they've got firmware and software upgrades which means as new technology comes about, you don't need to throw out the audio talent that you've already invested into. So this new board is the HSR82T, which actually rings a bell because we've done some HDMI board upgrades about a year ago uh, with the Storm Audio unit. I'm pretty sure that was the HSR72 by memory. Uh, I forget exactly which one that is, but it seems as though these HSR series seems to be the higher end boards which the Acris, the Storm are using uh, and likely many of the other higher end professional grade products. And again, being a piece of hardware that can swap out means much more longevity with the processor itself. So other things in the box, of course, user manual, although the PDFs these days usually do the trick just fine. Uh, for my little surprise HDMI board upgrade here for our other unit, uh, we've got the instructions for changing out the hardware. Now guys, I'd recommend that you'd use your dealer or installer to do the hardware upgrade uh, because it is a bit technical and you don't want to avoid warranty. So your dealer or authorized installer can make this change for you. There is a process as well with the firmware. So if you actually have the wrong firmware loaded at the wrong time, uh, the software on board, the unit can reject the board and brick the unit. So it's really careful process. Absolutely recommend getting someone to do that for you, just so you're not stressing about, um, you know, upsetting the software here. And not to mention that the HDMI boards are somewhere around Aussie dollar wise, a couple of thousand bucks. So you definitely don't want to do damage with that. So we've actually powered up for the very first time. Red lights turned on. Muse came up in the front panel and just sort of sat there for about a minute. Shut up and sit down. And I thought, okay, let's boot this up. Didn't get any action. So I think that's its initial boot up stage. The logo is now gone, so we're gonna give it another try and see if we're actually gonna get action this time. Blue is good. Full touch screen, menu system on board. All of this accessible via the IP login, so our last unit, we're just controlling all by the laptop. We'll do the same with this. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect it to the IP network, and the remote control is gonna go back in the box, and we'll be linking up some control four, so it'll be completely automated through that system instead. So all this stuff, we can start getting a little bit more excited about when we actually plug it in. So one thing about displays is they can get in the way, so uh, I'm sure there's probably a dim mode for this. Uh, once we get it in the rack, we'll play around with that. Although we've got solid doors in front of our unit, we're not fussed. Uh, that could be a big deal if you've got an open rack, having all the blue lights and the, and the big panel can actually be a distraction. Now the other thing some people like is an on-screen display. Now, we calibrate and manage a lot of video systems, and I can tell you most systems that overlay an on-screen display 
can actually muck up the picture. We've got issues with black levels and a few other nasties. So I'm actually a big fan of no on-screen display, which this guy doesn't touch the video at all. It just switches. And then with the IP login, you can control the unit completely via automation, a laptop, or remote control. So this is a fully American-made beast in which you know there's only a handful that are, and there's a whole lot that were kind of Japanese heritage, but made out of China and Vietnam and all that stuff. So this has a truly high quality pedigree to it. I know the team and actress have already, there's been a number of emails between us regarding this new unit, the new HDMI boards, the support's been fantastic so far. So it really is a high category unit. Now, Aussie dollars wise, this thing's about 10,000 bucks. The competition around there, probably the closest thing would be the new Arcam. We haven't checked that out yet. That's a little bit more at like nine, though I don't believe it's maybe as refined as what the Acris is. We'll soon find out with some listening tests soon. The unit that is sort of, we've been running a fair bit, the Anthem AVM60. Now on the previous Muse we had here with the 2.0 chipset, it was a big game changer. So, you know, for double the money, Anthem's 5,000 bucks, this is 10,000, is absolutely worth every single penny. In fact, we also had a Trinov Altitude 32 in here the other week, and I can tell you the actress sounds a whole lot closer to the Trinov than it did the Anthem. So this thing is really doing some sophisticated work. The other big competition out there is going to be something like, you know, Storm, Datasat, Trinov, they sound amazing. Steinway, Lindorf, they do a high-end processor, but seriously, they're all double the money of this guy. So this really sets in a pretty special category. Really looking forward to connecting this up next with the Theory Audio. So guys, I will check in again, do another video with this in the demo room, and check in with exactly how it's been running. So there's this bit of an unboxing sneak peek really of what the Acris Muse is all about. In the coming video, I'm gonna talk about all this thing, how it's performing in our dedicated 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos cinema. This is gonna be driving the show. But guys, I wanna know what processor do you have right now or which processor is it that you're lining up to install next? Is this one gonna make your top hit list? If so, let us know in the comments below. And remember to smash the like button, subscribe, and find out more really cool stuff with real home cinema. I'll catch you next time.